by mixing baking soda with some vinegar, and we produce CO2 gas, which can be conveniently captured in a balloon, liquid water, and a compound known as sodium acetate as a byproduct. Welcome to the flock. Stick around to see the limiting reactant calculations for this lab experiment. The objective for today is to blow up a balloon using the aforementioned chemical reaction. And we want to create the most carbon dioxide gas possible in order to blow up said balloon. <laughs> Before we can do so, we must do some math. What is the limiting reactant if we have half of a gram of baking soda and 50 milliliters of 0.83 molar, that's moles per liter, acetic acid. So what the problem has now given us is two values for our two different reactants, our acetic acid, i.e. our vinegar, and our sodium bicarbonate, i.e. our baking soda. We have half a gram of this, and we have 50 milliliters of this vinegar at a concentration of 0.83 molar, or moles per liter. And if we mix those two together, we want to know how much carbon dioxide gas can we theoretically make if we mix those two reactants together. This, of course, will be based off of the limiting reactant, and therefore, how much excess is also left over. I'm going to work through this problem with you, but the next three will be sped up quickly so that you can just check your answers. Let's do this. Limiting reactant problems require two magical lines to freedom. We know that our goal here is going to be grams of our CO2 gas. For the first line, we have half a gram of baking soda, that's our sodium bicarbonate. And for the second line, we have 50 milliliters of acetic acid, that's our vinegar. Anytime we have milliliters with a molarity value, we need to convert that to liters before we can go any farther. So let's go ahead and do that now. There are a thousand milliliters in one liter. Now that we have the givens for both and the goals at the end of our line, let's fill in the rest. Going from grams of one chemical to grams of a different chemical requires molar mass, mole ratio, molar mass setup. Let's look to our periodic table to find the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate. Sodium is 23, hydrogen is 1.008, carbon is 12.011, and oxygen is 16, and there happens to be three of those atoms present in one molecule of sodium bicarbonate, so 16 times three. Add those pieces together and we get 84.019 grams per mole. Going from one chemical to another requires a mole ratio. Looking back at our balanced equation, we see it is a one to one to one to one to one relationship across the table. So for every one mole, of CO2, there's one mole of sodium bicarbonate. Now we need the molar mass of CO2 to get to the grams of CO2, which is our goal, and that means we need to add up a 12.011 from the periodic table for carbon and 2 times 16 for oxygen. That gives us a molar mass for CO2 of 44.011 grams per mole. Multiply all the numbers on the top together, multiply all the numbers on the bottom together, then divide those two answers to get 0 0.2619 grams of CO2. Now let's solve the acetic acid one. We have 50 milliliters of 0.83 molar, again that is 0 0.83 moles per one liter. That is the correct way to write it for dimensional analysis or stoichiometry calculations. We're going to plug this in as our next conversion factor to get rid of liters. My liters cancels, so does the milliliters, by the way. Now I need to convert from acetic acid to carbon dioxide, just as before. So I need a mole ratio. Conveniently, it's all one-to-one -one ratio according to the balanced equation. So for every one mole of CO2, there happens to be one mole of acetic acid or vinegar. Same as before, now we just need the mass of our CO2 in order to get to grams of our CO2 product that can be produced. Multiply all the values across the top, our 50 by 1 by 0 0.83 by 1 by 44.011, and divide that all by 1,000 to get 1.826 grams of CO2. The limiting reactant is the reactant that gets used up entirely, or the one that makes the least amount of product. So between these two, if we compare, this one is clearly the smaller number. Therefore, sodium bicarbonate or baking soda would be the limiting reactant in this equation with this amount of starting mass. By process of elimination then, we also know that acetic acid would be the excess reactant. 
So theoretically, this would be the maximum amount of CO2 we could make with 50 milliliters of 0.83 molar acetic acid and half a gram of baking soda. But what if we have 1.5 grams of baking soda instead? Is it still the limiting reactant or is it now the one in excess? Following the same pattern we did before, go ahead and pause the video here and give it a try yourself. So hopefully you found that, again, in this scenario, baking soda is still the limiting reactant. So in our 1.5 gram trial, we know that baking soda will still be the limiting reactant. But what if we had 3 grams of baking soda instead of 1.5 or 0.5? Go ahead and pause the video here to give it a shot. Hmm, certainly seems like we're getting closer between these final two product values to where they would almost both be the limiting reactant, but still we see that sodium bicarbonate is the limiting reactant and acetic acid is the excess reactant. But what if we had four grams of baking soda instead of half, one and a half, or three? Is it still the limiting reactant? Go ahead and pause the video here to see if you can figure it out. Finally, we have reached the threshold where the amount of CO2 produced from baking soda is larger than the amount that can be made from 50 milliliters of 0.83 molar vinegar. So in this case, finally, acetic acid happens to be the limiting reactant and sodium bicarbonate happens to be the excess reactant. Now that of course will be the case for our four gram trial. Y'all ready for this? Let's get to the lab. All right, so here we go. Dumping in the baking soda, which I pre-filled into the balloons. We can see that there's a reaction going on. Check out how big these balloons are getting. Woohoo! So this was our first one with half a gram of baking soda. Our second one with 1.5 grams of baking soda. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it didn't all react. Let's see. There we go. That's better. It was just stuck. Then we had our three grams of baking soda producing 1.57 grams of carbon dioxide. And our last trial, we had four grams of baking soda to produce 1.8 grams of carbon dioxide. So as you can see, the four gram sample obviously created the largest balloon out of all of the samples, just by a hair though, so not by much more than the three gram sample, which makes sense because in the four gram sample, the sodium bicarbonate, the baking soda, was the limiting reactant. And really the only difference was 1.57 grams of CO2 could be created theoretically here versus 1.8 grams of CO2 could be theoretically created here since they all started with the same volume of 50 milliliters of 0.83 molar acetic acid or vinegar. Our half a gram sample of course created the most measly and pathetic blown up balloon because it only created 0.2619 grams of CO2. Whereas our 1.5 gram sample created a little over double that at 0.78 grams of CO2. So its balloon definitely seems at least, at least double of what the half a gram sample was. Of course, be sure to test yourself before you wreck yourself. 
What if you had 30 grams of baking soda in 75 milliliters of acetic acid? How big of a balloon could you blow up then? Which one is the a limiting reactant and which one is in excess? What is the theoretical amount of CO2 gas you could generate to blow up a balloon? Recapping what we did today, we did a conversion from grams of one chemical to grams of another chemical. And we also did a stoichiometric conversion by using molarity of a solution and then comparing those two separate dimensional analyses to figure out the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. Please give this video a quax up and subscribe to Duck Conta for some more ducking chemistry. No ducks, no glory.